He gave us his only son. Jesus Christ, our Savior, his most precious one. He has sent us his message of love and sends those who Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. All time belongs to him, and all the ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. By his holy, and glorious wounds, May Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God.
May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Exult, let them exult, the hosts of heaven. Exult, let angel ministers of God exult. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty king's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal king. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest friends, standing in, in the awesome glory of this holy light, invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthy among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just with ardent love of mind and heart and with devout service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord, his Son, our, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These, then, are the feast of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forefathers, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry-shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that, with a pillar of fire, banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O wonder of your humble care for us, O love, O charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O happy fault that earns so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day, dazzling in the, is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of these and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. By now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor, a fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light, for it is fed by melting wax, drying out by mother bees to build a torch so precious. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. 
receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets. Christ, your Son, who, coming back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 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 Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these the last days has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed the first day. Then God said, Let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome and separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and morning followed the second day. Then God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin, so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin, and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth. In the basin of water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed the third day. Then God said, Let there be light in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days, and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day, the lesser one to govern the night and he made stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed, the fourth day. Then God said, <clears throat> Let the water teem with abundance of living creatures, and on earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the waters of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, morning followed, the fifth day. <coughs> Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kind of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, 
and all kinds of creepy things on the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and all over all wild animals, and all creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have a dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished with the work that he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. You are clothed with majesty and glory, robbed in light as a cloak. Lord, send, send out, out your spirit, spirit and renew the, the face of the earth. earth. You fix the earth upon its foundation, not to be moved forever. With the ocean, as, the, as with a garment, you covered it. Above the mountains, the water stood. Lord, Lord send out, out your spirit, spirit and, and renew, renew the face of the earth. You send forth springs into water courses that wind among the mountains. Beside them, birds of heaven dwell. From among the branches, they send forth their song. Lord, Lord send out, out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Your, your water the mountains from your palace. The earth you replete from, with the fruit of your works. You raise grass for the cattle and vegetation for man's use, producing bread from the earth. Lord, Lord send, send out, out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have wrought them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Lord, Lord send, send out, out your spirit, spirit and renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that, at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you lift up your staff and, with a hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. 
But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them, right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through a column of a fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force, a glance that threw them into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. The Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea, when the Lord, Lord hurtled them into its midst. The water flowed back. It covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped, but the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power to that, that the Lord had shown them against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. I will sing to the Lord. For he is gloriously triumphant, horse and chariot he cast into the sea. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. He is my God, I praise him, and the God of my Father, I extol him. Let, Let us, us sing, sing to, to the Lord, Lord. he has, he has come, come himself in, in glory. glory. The Lord is a warrior. Lord is his, is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and army he hurled into the sea. The elite of his officers were submerged in the Red Sea. Let, Let us sing, sing to, to the Lord. Lord. He, he has covered, covered himself, himself in glory. The floodwaters covered them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, magnificent in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shattered the enemy. Let, Let us, us sing, sing to the Lord. Lord. He, he has covered, covered himself in glory. You brought in the people you redeemed and planted them on a mountain of your inheritance, the place where you made your seat, O Lord, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands established. This Lord shall reign forever and ever. Let, Let us, us sing, sing to, to the Lord. Lord. He has, he has covered himself, himself in glory. Let us pray. 
O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about uh, as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come, without pay, without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my way, say the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return them, till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows, and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be, that goes forth from my mouth, my word shall not return to me, to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end which I set it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. God indeed is my Savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. You, you will, will draw, draw water, water joyfully, joyfully from, from the springs, springs of, of salvation. salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exaltation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You shall draw, draw water fully from, from the springs, springs of, of salvation. salvation.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress progress in any kind of virtue through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless, bless you, you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who made this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that, renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For we have for if we have grown into the union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all, and to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you, might, you, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God. God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The right hand of the Lord has struck it with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. 
with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him and became like dead men. The angel said to the women in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening. I think it's uh, and certainly happy Easter. After this long 40 days of preparation, uh, we finally arrived to this great Easter vigil. I think there are certainly really two great feasts which the Church offers us during the year. The first, of course, being Christ Christmas, and the second being Easter. In many ways, these two uh, these two holidays kind of parallel one another. It's fair to say that Christmas is marked by a kind of joy, uh, the joy of a newborn baby, the joy of the newborn Christ child. Yet the tone of Easter, that which marks this particular liturgy, is rather different. The tone of the Easter liturgy is not one so much of joy as it is of triumph. Uh, not the triumph of a general in battle or the triumph of an Olympian claiming the gold medal, this is the triumph of life over death. This is the triumph of God himself. I don't hesitate to say that it is, in fact, God's greatest triumph, that it was our Lord Jesus Christ's greatest work. It is, I think, really worth reflecting on for actually a few minutes, uh, the way in which this great victory took place, uh, the way in which God brought about this great victory precisely because it teaches us something important about the Christian life. If we consider the situation on the evening of Good Friday, things looked pretty bad. Uh, within about 18 hours from the evening after the Last Supper until 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, quite a bit had taken place. Uh, our Lord was betrayed, he went through his agony in the garden, he went on trial, he was ultimately hung on a cross, and then his dead body lay in the tomb. And what would the assessment be at this point? What's the verdict at this point? By all outward appearances, the verdict seems to be defeat. The Christ, the Messiah, the one who is coming to the world to save his people, what has been put to death by foreign rulers. Uh, from the Roman perspective, this is just another case of one more troublemaker being put to death. Uh, from the devil's point of view, uh, just as in the garden at the beginning of time with Adam and Eve, the devil has won once again, this time defeating the anointed one of God, the Messiah, this time having brought about this great and shameful death. But man looks on the outward appearance while God sees reality itself. 
The reality of what has happened is far, far different. There is what, quite, what could reasonably be termed the great reversal. By rising from the dead, Christ conquers death. The cross, which was meant to be a shameful death for him, the shameful death of a traitor of a rebel, the shameful death of the instrument used by the devil to kill the Messiah, this cross, which was meant to be shameful, is turned to the shame of our Lord's enemies. What appears to have been total defeat, when seen in the full light of day, is in fact the greatest of victories. And this should, and this must in fact, give us Christians a totally new horizon. A totally new way of viewing life and everything in it. Uh, that we no longer view this life with the short-sightedness of the Romans, or even with the short-sightedness of the devil. But rather that we begin to view this life with the far-sightedness, with this new horizon, which is eternity itself which is Christ risen from the dead, which is Christ our hope, which is the, the hope and the assurance that at the end of time, regardless of what travails we have to face in this life, we face the hope of the resurrection. And what a blessed hope it is. This is why the Christian life, above all, is marked by the note of joy, the note of triumphant joy, not just the note of joy of the newborn Savior having been born in this world, having come and redeemed us with his precious blood, but with the triumph of the cross. A triumph which looked like defeat, but which we know as Christians is the greatest victory. And it's within this great light of hope, it's within this great light of the triumph of Jesus Christ that we live our lives, and it's toward this great triumph which we ourselves journey knowing and loving and serving God in this world, and so coming to be with him in the blessed resurrection at the end of time. I hope that uh, going forward we can all ever more deeply reflect on this truth and take the very truth of the resurrection deeper and deeper into our hearts. And by assimilating it ever deeper into our hearts, we come to live our lives more, more fully in the hope of that very resurrection. God love you all and keep your faith, and happy Easter to each one of you, to your family, and your friends. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with Him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten, Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and his works, and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. I invite you to respond, I do. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. On this holy night, when we celebrate Christ's triumph over sin and death, let us pray for the Church, the world, and one another. For the Church throughout the world, that we be authentic and joyful witnesses to Christ's resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in position of leadership, that they govern in truth and in integrity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who still live in the darkness of sin and despair, that they be assisted by God's grace to recognize Jesus as their risen Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For, for healing for abuse survivors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. For health care workers, first responders, the sick, the elderly, and the lonely, that they be guided, protected, and comforted by the wisdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the parish for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers in our Book of Intention, and for prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the holy souls in purgatory, that they be admitted into the house of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of the living, we find our hope in your Son's resurrection. Graciously grant our petitions in accord with your will, for we ask all these things through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. be God forever.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with passive joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of hosts, host, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we may come in prayer and petition and through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and guard her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis Arco, and Mark our Bishop, and all those who, according to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and count them on the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father of faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask from Almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation in the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O oh Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not by our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form of my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the feast with the unleavened bread of purity and truth. Alleluia. The body of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this Paschal sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that these days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast Come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia.